that's the good part. Uh, but today we'll be focusing on Make Money Organics. The company is in focus on the back of its Q4 earnings. The company saw improvement on a quarterly basis. However, the year-on-year -year growth continues to be lower. Companies' earnings were impacted by sluggish, sluggish demand and lower product price realizations across the market. We have Ankit Patel, the chairman and managing director of the company, joining us to discuss the quarter gone by. Uh, welcome, Ankit. Thank you so much for joining us here at Midcap Radar. Uh, would you say Q4 marks are uh, the bottom in terms of the pricing worries uh, that the entire space has seen in the last year? Hi, good afternoon. Yes, uh, quarter four has been uh, the lowermost quarter. Overall, as an industry, we it has already bottomed out pricing point of view. And we see from the first quarter and second quarter onwards, there will be improvement taking place. Okay, so you will see an improvement. So what kind of growth are you targeting in FY25, Ankit? Uh, say in terms of volume growth, margins as well, because margin has been a big pain point as well. So FY24 was quite, uh, we, we went down compared to FY23 quite a bit. So there will be definitely growth taking place in FY25. We see significant growth taking place because FY25 already bottomed out. And uh, major growth will be there from the volume point of view, pricing point of view, there will be some pressure. But compared to FY24, there will be better margin in FY25. Okay, uh, can you give us, or can you quantify you know, what will be the revenue trajectory for FI25 and what is the kind of improvement that you're seeing in margins, especially EBITDA margins for FI25? So overall as a chemical sector and particularly in the agrochemical sector, we, we see that the improvement will start taking place somewhere from the second quarter onwards. And in the second half of the financial year, there will be better uh, positivity will be there. So it is a little early to mention about the, the kind of the revenue target for this financial year. But definitely, it will be much better compared to FY24. Okay, all right. You know, Ankit, uh, there has been a global update as well. UBAC, uh, that is the pigment company in Germany, that filed for insolvency. Is it seeing any impact on pigment prices globally? Uh, was it a customer for you or was it only uh, for that particular region that we saw insolvency and the other units are not impacted? So, it has been particularly UBAC, uh, Germany, uh, which has filed for the bankruptcy. And uh, so definitely there will be some positive movement taking place for the Indian pigment manufacturers. And we being one of the leading manufacturer of the thalocyanine based pigment, it will definitely help us. Uh, could you give us a sense uh, of what was the kind of market share that UBAC had as far as the Indian market was concerned? What was the market share you were enjoying in your pigment segment? And uh, what is it that you could you would be able to gain? Because we understand that even players like Sudarshan Chemicals stand to gain from this particular bankruptcy filing. Yes, so but as a make money, our market share is close to 8% globally. And uh, UBAC, uh, definitely they have about 15% market share globally. And... Uh, Definitely, the uh, Indian market point of view, as you mentioned, uh, in the thalocyanine based pigment, we are one of the largest, which is pigment green and pigment blue. So we'll have an uh, advantage in this two pigment. Okay, you said 18%, right? As a make money, we have got about 8% market share in thalocyanine. 8% market. Okay, 8% market share. All right. Um, so tell us, you do have some capex uh, which is uh, lined up. You have the urea, nano urea segment where you are putting up a capex of 150 crore rupees. Um, how has uh, the customer demand or inquiry been here? Ankit wanted to understand what will the asset turn here be and when do you commission this one? For the nano urea plant, we have commissioned in the fourth quarter, which is we commissioned the plant in the month of March. And uh, our plant capacity is 5 crore bottles a year. So if we multiply it in terms of revenue, it can uh, generate revenue of close to 1,000 crore. So it will have much higher uh, asset to turnover ratio. And uh, as far as the product is concerned, it is a completely new product, which is going to replace partly urea and which will help Indian government as a, uh, as a government because there's a huge subsidy amount uh, government is paying on the fertilizer and mainly on the urea. So with the new area, new nano urea technology, Indian government will save substantial subsidy amount. At the same time, from the farmer point of view, it is a very good product. Uh, it has got better results compared to urea. And uh, uh, as a country, we will all be benefited as a government right. and as a farmer. 
Ankit, uh, you know, one question. So capacity utilization, if you are right, for Q4, you know, in the crop production business, was at 77%. Uh, in the pigments business, it was around 48%. Now, in the backdrop of, you know, the bankruptcy filing, do you expect to see higher capacity utilization, especially in the big pigment space? So what is it that you're targeting in both of these segments for FI25? So in FY25, for the agrochemical segment, we see the uh, capacity utilization will be in the range of about 75 to 80 percent. In the case of pigment, there will be improvement in capacity utilization, but it, uh, we feel it will reach to close to 60 percent capacity utilization. Okay, all right. So that will be the capacity utilization uh, in FY25. I wanted to understand your export domestic mix, Ankit. Uh, we have seen a lot of headwinds in exports because of the Red Sea issues. We have seen freight rates going higher. Is that something which is impacting most of the exporters? Because you do have a big export mix as well. Yes, as a Make Me Organics Limited, more than 70% revenue comes from the export segment. And uh, that is the reason we are now doing the project, which is titanium dioxide, as well as nano urea, which we are focusing more from the domestic market point of view to balance our revenue mix between domestic and export market. Regarding the Red Sea issue, yes, for the uh, Red Sea, because of the Red Sea issue, there has been increase in the logistic cost. Uh, initially, we felt it is going to be for a few days, but now, this phenomenon is going on since more than one quarter, and I think it will remain for next two quarters. Okay, okay, all right. Uh, last question before we let you go, Ankit. You have indicated in your presentation that you'll be seeing decent revenue growth after these expansions and EBITDA margins of 14 to 15% in coming years. When do you reach that mark? Will it happen in FY25 itself, or it will take some years before you reach that mark? So, again, it is a little early to mention about the uh, EBITDA margin point of view, but on a long run, definitely we see uh, we will be able to achieve that kind of EBITDA margin. Uh, uh, regarding FY25, I think we will be able to give you more idea somewhere in the second half of the financial year. Okay, thank you so much uh, for joining us and giving us a sense of how Q4 panned out and how do you expect to see FI25? There's been some disruption in the industry globally and you stand to benefit as well. Thank you so much for your time. But let's now slip into a short break. When we return, we will be joined by the management of Sharda Crop Chem to discuss the Q4 numbers and the overall business outlook. Stay tuned. <laughs> 